Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, we're going to be setting up a containerization solution specifically Pertainer. I've been wanting to do this video for a little while now and finally have the chance. And Pertainer is pretty cool. It's kind of like Kubernetes, but a little bit simpler. But I don't want you to think that this is a simple solution in terms of what you can do with it. It's a very flexible solution and I think you're going to love it. And you know what? It might be the best containerization solution for you. And in this video, you're going to have a chance to try it out. More specifically, what I'll do in this video is walk you through the process of setting up Portainer from beginning to end on Ubuntu 2404. And as we go through the steps, I'll show you everything on my Proxmox server, but you don't have to use Proxmox. You could use something else like a VPS or even a physical server because the commands that I'm going to give you should work regardless of where you have Ubuntu Server 2404 installed. But before we get started though, I just wanted to take a moment to let you know that I have a brand new course available, my Linux Essentials Workshop, is available right now over on Udemy. And with this 23 video course as your guide, you'll learn everything that you need to know to get up to speed with Linux and earn that certification. The Linux Essential Certification is a great certification to earn to open the door to other certifications that you'll learn later in your career. It's a great certification to get started with and I highly recommend it. And why should you learn Linux from me? Well, I have over 20 years of experience with Linux, but not only that, Learn Linux TV is an official partner with the Linux Professional Institute, so you'll be learning from someone who's actually involved with LPI. So definitely check out my course, you won't regret it. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, it's time to install Portainer. And here on the screen right now is my actual Proxmox environment. Now I have an entire series that covers Proxmox if you want to learn more about that. But this video is about Portainer, so what we're going to do is install that right now. And what I have right here is my virtual machine, the one that I plan on using for this project, cleverly named Portainer Test. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is start it up. Now while that's starting, what I'll do is just take you through some of the options here. I gave this particular VM eight gigs of memory. Since Portainer is running containers, I wanna make sure that it has enough memory to do so. I gave it four cores. You don't really have to spec it as high as I did here, but I think at least four gigs should be fine. But again, the more memory you have, the more you can do with it. So if you're curious how I've configured the resources here, well, now you know. We can go back to the console, see how we're doing here with the boot process, and my server is booted. Now on my end, I've already installed Ubuntu 2404. As you can see right here, it's ready to go. I can log in. But if you haven't yet installed Ubuntu server, then what I'll do is leave a card for a video right about here that will show you the process of installing Ubuntu server 2404. So if you have yet to install Ubuntu server, well, that video will teach you how to do it. Anyway, here I am on my server. So what I'm gonna do is grab the IP address. And in my case, it's 10.10.10.252. So what I'll do is switch over to a terminal. That way I can SSH into it. It's easier for me to show you the process that way. And here we are in my shell. So I'll use SSH to access that VM, the one that I created earlier. And that ended in 252, so that should be the one. I'll type in my super secret password. And here we are. Now, one more thing before we get started. I have a video that covers everything that you should do with every new Linux server build. It'll walk you through the process of setting the host name, installing updates, creating a user for yourself, those kinds of things. So what I'll do is leave a card for that video right about here. And I do recommend that you complete everything inside that video before we continue. Anyway, let's get started. The first official thing that we'll do to set up Portainer is install Docker. That's a prerequisite, so we'll take care of that right now. Now what I don't want you to do is install the snap version of Docker. If you did install that, I want you to remove it. According to Portainer themselves, they test their solution on official Docker. So I wanna make sure that you're getting that from Docker themselves. According to Portainer, you can run into problems if you are using the snap version of Docker. So I just wanted to point that out real quick. If you are running the snap version, well, you might run into problems and that's not supported. But what I'll do right now is show you the process of setting up Docker. So let's do it. The first thing we'll do is run sudo apt update. Make sure that our repository index is fully up to date. I'll type in my super secret password. Now in my case, it's telling me that four packages can be upgraded, but I've already checked those off camera. We don't have to worry about those right now. Let's just go ahead and continue. 
So the next thing we'll do is run sudo apt install, and we're going to install ca-certificates, and we're also going to install curl. You might already have these installed, we just wanna make sure. In my case, I do, so there's nothing that I needed to do here. Now next, what I'm going to do is process all the keys that we might have in Etsy apt keyrings. So we'll run sudo install-m 0755-d slash Etsy apt and then keyrings. So essentially what we're doing is we're setting up the keyring that the repository for Docker is going to be using. So I'll press enter on this command. And as an aside, you can find all of the commands that I'm using in this video right in the blog post for this video. You'll find the link down below in the description. So if you want to copy and paste commands, you could definitely do that. Next, what I'll do is paste in the command that we'll need next. And this is going to finish setting up the keyring for us. We want to make sure that we have the GPG key for the repository. So to do that, we'll run sudo and then curl, and then hyphen F, S, capital S, capital L, just like that, and HTTPS, colon slash slash, download.docker.com, Linux, Ubuntu, GPG, and then dash O. We want to save that in slash Etsy, and then slash apt, keyrings, and then docker.asc. So I'll press enter. And that was simple enough. Then next, sudo and then chmod. Then we'll add the readable bit to all. We'll make sure that everyone can read it. And we should be good to go for that. Next, what we'll do is set up the actual repository. Again, I'll paste the command, and this is probably one you don't want to type in manually because it's quite long. And here's the next command. So you could probably see why I recommend that you don't try to type this manually. I grabbed this command from Docker's documentation, and I also included it in the blog post for this video. That's the last time that I'll mention it, but I'll press enter. Okay, so the repository has been installed. And next, there's a series of packages that we will need installed here for this solution. And here's the command. We're going to install a series of plugins for Docker, the community edition of Docker itself, the command line utility, container D, and a couple of plugins. So I'll press enter, enter again, and now Docker is installing. And there we go. Now what we want to do is test Docker to make sure that it works. To do so, we can run sudo, and then docker run, and we need a container to run, and what I'm going to do is run the hello world container, and that's a good one to test with, so that's what I'll do, I'll run that one. And it worked. The hello world container is very small, it doesn't take any time to pull it down, and all it does is show you the information that you see right here. It's just enough to know that docker is in fact working. However, we had to use sudo, and I don't really like to use sudo all the time when I run docker, so what I'm going to do is run sudo just to add my user to a specific group. I'll use the user mod command to accomplish that. Dash A, because I want to add a user to something, I want to add a user to a group. So I've added the dash capital G option. The group is Docker. And then we want to type our username right here. So that way our user is a part of this group. Let's go ahead and log out. And then we'll log in again. Back into the server. And then we'll type groups. And as you can see, my user is in fact a member of the Docker group. So what I'll do is remove sudo. We shouldn't need that now. Let's see. And it still works. So far, so good. So if I didn't know any better, I would say that Docker is set up and ready to go. So now what we get to do is install Portainer. And this is going to be a lot of fun. So the first thing we'll do to support Portainer itself is set up a volume for it. To do that, we'll run docker. We want to create a volume. So volume create. What we could do is call it portainer underscore data. I think that should be good enough. So I'll press enter. So now we have that volume. And now what we're going to do is install portainer. Sorry to interrupt my own video, but I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate each and every single one of you and I love creating Linux related content for you guys. But unfortunately, producing high quality Linux content like this isn't cheap. But if you want to help me make even more content for you guys, then consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And a great way to do that is to check out the official shop for Learn Linux TV, which was just recently updated. Inside the shop, you'll find distro themed shirts, bags, drinkware, and more. 
And there's some other surprises there as well. For example, I've just introduced a mouse pad that doubles as a Tmux cheat sheet. How cool is that? So check out the shop at merch.learnlinux.tv or you could check out the merch shelf right here on YouTube. You could get yourself something really cool and support Linux learning at the same time, so it's a win-win. Anyway, thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. And Portainer itself is going to be distributed as a container. So this command right here is going to download the Portainer container and run it for us. So let's press enter and see what happens. Well, that was pretty quick. So now that we've downloaded it, is Portainer running? Well, take a look at that. The container for Portainer is running, as you can see right here. So what this also means is that we should be able to access Portainer from our web browser now. So what we'll do is just open up a new tab here, type in the IP address, 10.10.252 so in my case, port 9443. We want to make sure that this is a secure connection. So the URL should look like that. So let's see what happens. Now it's giving us a warning, and this is because we don't have a secure connection. This was expected because we're setting it up for the very first time. We'll just go ahead and continue anyway. So now it's asking us to create a password. So I'll do that right now. And just so you know, if you don't answer the prompts here within a certain number of minutes, it times out and then you have to reboot your server. If that happens, you might see a message that looks something like this. The easiest way is probably just reboot the server, access this page, you should be good to go. But anyway, what I'll do is click create user and check it out. We have Portainer. Shouldn't need this anymore. Anyway, let's go ahead and run a container. What I'm gonna do is install fresh RSS. I think that's a fun container that we can install, so let's do it. What we'll do is click get started. This will get us connected to the local installation here. Then we have our local instance. We'll click Live Connect. And now what we could do is run a container. And what we're gonna do is create a container, but before we do that, we do wanna create a volume. This way, when we use fresh RSS, we don't lose track of what we've read. We want to save the information. We don't wanna start over every time. So for that, we'll need a volume. Let's go ahead and create one. What I'll do is call it fresh RSS underscore data, and let's create it. Now we have it. So back in containers, let's go ahead and add it. Call it fresh RSS. And the container that we want to use for this, for this example, is Linux server slash fresh RSS. Now here in the volumes tab, what we want to do is map a volume. And then for the path, it's going to be slash config. Then the volume, we want to apply the fresh RSS volume here. So that's what we should need for that. And also what we're going to do is publish any ports that might be exposed in the container to the host system so that way we can actually access fresh RSS. Otherwise it's just, you know, not able to be accessed at all. And it's not very useful in that case, but we should have pretty much everything we need here. So what we're going to do is deploy the container. We see fresh RSS is listed right here. So now we have the ports published here. Now we can see the ports listed here. We have 32768. We have 32769. So what we're going to do is basically just copy this IP address, we'll paste it right here, colon. I'll add the port number. It'll be whatever port number port 80 in the container was mapped to. In my case, it was this one. It shows in the output. So again, if we go here, we see the ports. The one at port 80 is the one I'm looking for. So that's port 32769. That's what I added here. So let's see if it works. And take a look at that. We have fresh RSS. Choose whatever language we want, click submit. And that looks good. Let's go to the next step. I'll leave that at its default. 
And let's set it up. And I'll click Submit. And let's complete the installation. Let's log in, see if it works. And check it out. We have a fresh RSS server that's all set and ready to go. We can add a subscription. We can add an RSS feed here. You can add a category if you want to. You can add a news feed here by adding the RSS feed if you know what it is. But I'll leave that up to you. I'll add my server here. Go back to the main page and check it out. By adding Learn Linux TV, you can see the latest posts from me in particular right here. So if you want to add my site, now you know you can. I'll leave it up to you as far as which feeds you add for yours, but either way, you should be good to go. And how cool is that? You now have your very own Portainer server that's set up and ready to go. If you enjoyed this video, then I hope you click that like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed this video. And also subscribe if you haven't already done so. There's all kinds of cool stuff coming that I can't wait for you to see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.